Good day, everybody. My name is Paul Thompson from Size Improve. Um, welcome to the latest episode of Marketing Mondays, where we feature marketing best veterans and leaders to share their career journey and inspire the new generation of marketers. For this episode, we're really excited um, and we've invited along a marketing veteran from the education sector, Javan Lin, Assistant Vice President of Marketing at PSB Academy in Singapore. Prior to this, Javan was a Senior Marketing Manager at the Private Learning uh, Institute, Kaplan, Singapore, and had also previously assumed the position of Head of Product Marketing at the Management Development Institute of Singapore, uh, or MDIS. So we're super excited to have you on board with us today, uh, and this is going to be Marketech Mondays. So hi, Javan. Um, how are you today? Hi, Paul. I'm good. I'm good. And uh, yeah, I just hope that uh, we are safe here. Uh, I hope that you are safe on your end as well. Yep, we are. We are indeed. Likewise, um, in these these very strange times, but uh, we we keep we keep moving on. Um, so you know, we're super excited to have you with us today, and excited to learn uh, from your your journey and your experiences within the industry. Um, you know, so first of all, it would be great to understand how you got started. Um, a lot of the leaders we've spoken to, um, have, you know, they've had a, we've had a few surprises in how they got started in the industry. Um, you know, what was it like for you? What was your first job in the industry? Um, and was it within, even within the, the marketing kind of sphere? Yeah, I think far from it, to be honest, if you believe, uh, I actually began my uh, career in the construction line. Yeah, so it's a totally different uh, 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 thing that, you know, uh, compared to what I'm doing right now. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. And and what was the, what was the, the your first uh, kind of role within, within marketing? Uh, well, I guess, uh, no, I think even before I, uh, no venture or transition into a marketing role. I think um, back then when I was in the construction industry, I think uh, the the challenge really was that you no, know, uh, I uh, in terms of the lifestyle that I have to go through during that phase when I just entered the workforce. Uh, you no, know, I had to wake up you no know, in the early hours of the day, uh, get onto my company's pickup, uh, pick up some workers, go to the construction site and do yeah. uh, basically to project coordinate, right, in that sense, uh, under the sun. And, and and to make matters worse, I think back then, uh, the the young version of me, I had I was uh, applying and studying as a, a degree, a part-time degree. So I had to attend yeah. evening classes as well. So I would yeah. actually head into the, you no know, lessons, uh, all sweaty and 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 you no know, um, basically tired as well, struggling yeah. to stay awake during the classes. Um, so so at the point of time, uh, obviously you know without much experience, uh, I began to you know doubt myself. You know, do I really have what it takes to 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 be uh, in the workforce essentially, mm. right? And 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 it was at that moment uh, uh, one of my mentors actually gave me the opportunity to enter the education industry, um, yeah. and and yeah, I think that since then I actually began as a a, a sales consultant. I was then actually a, a marketing guy at a point of yeah. time, and 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 I got my break you know, through a gradual transition into taking on more and more portfolios along the way. Right, I think. Uh, to become a full uh, flash marketer right now, what really helped me was my initial uh, stages uh, as a sales consultant, as a recruitment uh, uh, consultant role back then, uh, in the initial stages when I joined the, the education industry. Um, I was there on the ground talking to prospective students, their parents, so on and so forth. And that is where I have the um, understanding of the common understanding of what are the needs, the you no, know, the desires, the wants of our uh, prospective students. I think that really helped me in um, my ability to essentially create campaigns and try to create content that really resonate with uh, our target audience right now. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it's a that's a fascinating transition. Um, like, and it's really great to to hear that how, how that kind of evolved over time. Um, you yeah. know, starting out in construction, you know, having the opportunity. I think you said for a mentor to, to move into sales. You know, I mean, mentors are obviously so important within within our industry, especially I find. Um, and then finally, moving into marketing, like it's a fascinating journey. Like, what was your what, when when you finally made that that step into the into the marketing world? Can you remember what that first campaign was that you that you worked on as a marketer? Yeah, I, I guess I guess I would have said that. Well, that wasn't my first campaign per se, but I think uh, that was the first campaign that I really began to realize that hey, uh, how far I was from the knowledge or the skills gap. Yeah, and it's something that I still laugh at myself uh, whenever I, I think about it. So uh, back then, I think um, the the campaign objective was to really come out with a lead generation campaign for a particular cause. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I have to go through the usual brief, uh, you know, creative brief, campaigns brief, and, yeah. and eventually, you know, got that campaign up online, right? Uh, so um, after a couple of days, I was just serving on my uh, mobile phone. Uh, and and I began to see my own ads, right? So yeah. the excitement naturally kicks in, right? And yeah. hey, I saw my own ads; it's working. So I was excited. I was, uh, uh, uh you know, uh, basically walking into my uh, uh, boss office and to you know let her know, hey, see this this is a you no know, ad that is ongoing right now, and yeah. uh, she kind of just brushed it off in a very tactful manner. They say, yeah, that's good, uh, but perhaps you were being retargeted. And um, and yeah, so yeah, there was an awkward pause at the moment, and and I sort of think yeah, this is true, and and at a point of time, I think it was also that particular uh, uh, moment that I thought, hey, uh, no, I have to tell myself that no, I I am I, I need to really dive deeper into the context yeah. of performance marketing and stuff like that, right? And mm -hmm. and I also begin to question myself, why should I be um no be seeing an ad or being served an ad where i'm not even um you no know, uh, the particular audience that would even yeah. consider this course right so yeah so so it, it kind of kicks uh, uh set the motion essentially for me yeah. to you know, really go go down deep into topics getting the help yeah. of my agencies my colleagues my mentors so and so forth and 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 it sort of set the tone as well right now to how i actually create my campaigns you know it's yeah. always asking myself you know what would be the you know right way to approach my campaigns yeah i mean that's that's fascinating i mean i, I certainly remember the first time i saw one of the campaigns you know the first campaign i worked on and you see it in market and you're like that's 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 pretty cool that's you know it's exciting because of all the hard work that went into that and it's a a tangible outcome of your efforts but super interesting to hear that wrapped up in there there was a there was a kind of a teaching moment, a learning moment to go, okay, well, there's a there's another layer down of, of data around the whole retargeting and, and how and how you can use that. Um, and it, you know, excluding specific audiences to, to, to make sure you're targeting the right people, etc. So yeah, that's yeah, fascinating, fascinating to hear. Um, you know, so let's let's talk about um, you know your current role with uh, PSB Academy. Um, so currently, uh, assistant vice president of marketing. Now, how did you how did you arrive at this particular role? Um, and you know, how has the how has the experience been leading uh, the academy's marketing team? Hmm. Well, I guess I guess um, first thing first, I think how I actually landed on to this role wasn't really by design. I think it's really based on you no know, circumstances that you no know, led me to this role. Uh, yeah. Again, I think the the education industry here in Singapore is neither too big nor too small in that sense. Uh, no, we know uh, we sort of know each other from different organizations, yeah. and 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 that's how I actually got that opportunity uh, uh, in this role. I think uh, um, I also believe that the companies value the direction, the culture, uh, how they actually nurture the, the employees play an important role as well uh, in terms of my experience. And so far, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, fantastic. And, and what, what are kind of what how would you describe to, you know, the 
the people just starting out um, in their journey within the industry, you know, what, what are the responsibilities for a role for someone in your position? What are the responsibilities that you have to do day to day? Um, and what, what do you consider some of the, the more challenging and rewarding parts uh, of those responsibilities? Mm. Right, right. I guess uh, uh, in, in, a, in a nutshell, I think essentially I, I oversee the entire uh, marketing and corporate communications uh, component mm -hmm. here, function here in, uh, at PSB Academy. Um, yeah. I guess the best, the, 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 the most challenging part of my role right now on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't think it's just specific to me. I think uh, 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 this is something that is uh, probably relevant to everybody, you know, be it from any industry per se. Uh, uh, for the best part of this one and a half years or so, uh, you know, due to the pandemic, obviously, uh, and the disruption that is is caused, um, you know, um, it's really about how uh, fluid and agile one must maintain in uh, um, our day to day marketing uh, plan and our mm. marketing execution. Um, to, to really uh, ensure that we still continue to engage our students uh, despite the disruptions that it has caused and mm. continue to stay relevant to them, right, in that sense. Uh, so so th this this is really the most uh, challenging part, uh, which is at the same time also, op I think, open up opportunities for, for, for us to, to really learn uh, on potential new angles. You know, uh, there may be a new way of um, marketing, there will be a new way of uh, creating a narrative just to you know, continue to engage the audience. I think that is also that good part that turns out from this challenge uh, as well. So yeah. so yeah, in a nutshell, I think that is that challenge. And the part that I really enjoy the most, I would say is uh, obviously during this time is, is you know, crucial that you know, we all stay united as a front to share a common goal. And uh, yeah. the messages, uh, so, so the, the part that I enjoy the most is you know, the stakeholders have been uh, understanding they yeah. realize what they realize that the challenge continues to evolve along the way um, as the pandemic continues to uh, hit us in that sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I guess that's the most enjoying part to 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 have that common goal. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think I think everyone would agree with you. It's you know the 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 pace of change, especially within you know kind of the the digital world within the kind of the martech world was fast before <laughs> and now it's you know it's becoming even you know that disruption and that, that need for transformation has just kind of um has accelerated even more so um so yeah organizations that are that are slightly behind have found themselves even further behind uh, with the kind of you know space time to make up um and kind of in line uh, in line with that it kind of brings me on to kind of my next question you know, you know, leadership, um, you know, in such, you know, and you, you, you did touch on this uh, a moment ago, but, you know, in, in times like this, times of disruption and uncertainty, you know, what, what are the what is the core philosophy for your leadership and how do you apply that um, within your context at PSB? Hmm. I, I guess, I guess, um... I, th I think as leaders, we all have different styles and uh, we are also learning from one another. Um, um, mm. you know, I'm still learning from my teammates as well. We are a group of uh, uh, I don't know, extraordinary you know, talent as well, uh, yeah. which is why I, I personally prefer to you know, uh, empower and to place that trust onto uh, the team itself. Uh, I have to trust myself, obviously, in order for me to, you know, and um, to, to translate that trust onto, you know, my colleagues. And, and I think, I think end of the day, we all make mistakes, right? You no, know, in terms of campaigns, no, all campaigns will be successful. Neither, no, all campaigns will be a failure in that context. So uh, my take is that, you no, know, we make mistakes together and uh, we probably can succeed together as well as a team. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And, and I guess to to build on what you've just you've just mentioned there um you know within within you know there's, there's always learning moments uh, as well as successes you know there we have both of those experiences um mm -hmm. now, and we'd love it'd be great to hear about you know what would you consider you know a learning moment that sticks out for you where something perhaps hasn't gone quite as well as it should have done um, but you know, there's there's been a, a something learned off the, off the back of that, um, and also you know, kind of what what when you think about your your career, what some of the big uh, what what's been a big success for you? Um, be great to hear about those. Mm. 
Mm. I think I think the definition of uh, you no know, success or failures in that context, I think it yeah. it changes, right? Uh, um, it evolves as I grow in both life and and my career, right? Yeah. I think uh, no, I used to think that you no, know, as a marketer, obviously in the context of education industry, is always yeah. about you no know, lead generation and you no know, achieving that lead targets. Um, and then it, it, it probably I know as you as you gain more knowledge and skill set, you kind of uh, look into you no know, secondary and subsequent metrics that uh, mm. that you find relevant in the context. So you start to think about you no, know, for example, quality of leads. Right? Uh, you mm. talk about even uh, uh, you no know, uh, social media engagement. What are the comments? Uh, I was pretty fixated sometimes on certain con uh, uh, certain campaigns on how the audience actually reacted based on their comments and stuff like that. But I think. You no, know, as as we grow uh, uh, to to a certain stage, you no, know, you realize that you no, know, uh, yes, these are all important metrics, right? That define uh, a, a certain business, the certain level of business success. Uh, but uh, as of now, what I really feel, uh, um, in what defines as a, a failure or success, is uh, slightly less tangible. I think uh, yeah. what matters to me right now is you no, know, how what is that social impact that I can. I can deliver to uh, the, my peers, for example, yeah, my right. colleagues, and even to a certain extent, uh, the students. Right? When you see certain students, you no, know, going through the uh, the education system uh, in your campus, and to they graduated, uh, mm -hmm. you kind of feel there's a self achievement, so to speak. That you no know, yeah. certain there must be certain things that you have done from marketing front that influence their choice. And stuff like that. So, so that's that's my take. I think uh, just beyond you know, um hard numbers, hard figures of stats and num uh, fig uh, numbers, right? Yeah. Uh, to 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 see more of the human side of things. I think that's 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 me right now. Yeah, yeah, and that's really interesting that you say that. Um, I've certainly heard that a number of times, and and quite specifically from people within the education sector. Um, you know, because you do have it's so tangible, and and the outcome is so fantastic for people once they achieve the, their particular goal, course, whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, it's great that you picked up on that, and that's that's definitely a running theme of you know kind of motivation for people in the sector to be you know to really feed off that. It's that's it's great to hear. Yeah. Um, and then pivoting slightly, so like in terms of you know mentorship. Um, would you say that you, you have particular people throughout your career that are, are, have been particularly inspiring and mentored you? You, met, you mentioned a mentor um, that I think got you a role into your first sales role. Like, how, how has that impacted your career, the people around you that you can learn from? Yeah, I, I... I guess I guess along my career, uh, like you mentioned, po uh, correctly pointed out, I think one of my very first mentor was the uh, the person that actually uh, brought me into the education industry. If not, I pro I would probably be still in you no know, under the sun doing project management, yeah. driving around with my pickup, right? Uh, yeah. And 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 throughout my career till now, I think I have been really blessed to have uh, quite a number of them. Um, each of them really uh, impacted my career and my life in the very different ways. Uh, you no, know, it can be from a uh, marketing perspective. It can be from uh, uh, interpersonal relationship perspective. Uh, it could be impact from you no know, uh, making me understand more about management skills. So, 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 you no, know, I I have such the different mentors that really uh, play different parts uh, to my life at this point of time. Um, yeah. But if I really have to name one, I think uh, I would say that um, the people that mom the, the the crucial moment, sorry, that uh, um, uh, really apply was uh, my ex boss who actually took the risk on me uh, yeah. to to allow me to to take me in into the full fledged marketing role. Yeah. Uh, so so that that really transformed my career per se, and uh, mm -hmm. to which I'm. No, I'm lucky to am fortunate to you no know, stick by to now. Yeah, 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 fantastic. And like having having a network of, of mentors and those and those professional relationships, I think is so so key in our industry um, because it can be like a one big family uh, a lot a lot of the time. And and we do know, you know everyone does know people all over the place in the marketing world. So yeah, and then 
and then if we think about um, education as a you know as a as a as a marketing problem or challenge, if if you like, um, and if we you know given your experience and 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 your success and, and the insights that you'll have, um, you know what are we and also the the pandemic um, the pandemic factor as well. Um, and the rapid rate of disruption and change that it's brought to not only education but so many sectors, but education especially has, has you know had a, had a, a big job and a big ask to to re you know to relook at strategies and and, and kind of pivot. Um, for you, what do, what do you think have been some of the biggest marketing challenges um, for institutions right now? And you know how do we where do we start to to tackle those? Hmm. Well, I, I guess I guess in in the context of education, um, I would say that this is I would I would quite dare to say that this is uh, taking sh taking shape on the global stage in that context. Every education mm -hmm. institutions around the world uh, somehow will will be uh, faced with this uh, dilemma in that context, right? Mm -hmm. Because you no know, digital transformation, as you rightly pointed out, uh, has really taken on. Uh, all in all sorts of forms and shapes, you know, at at a very fa uh, fast speed, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Due to the pandemic, right? Um, yeah. We see students pivot onto online learning. We see uh, 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 classes uh, being held up due to the fact that we can't really conduct face to face classes and stuff like that. Um, and and how would, I think the challenge right now for every education institution is then how do we look beyond this pandemic, right? Uh, how would be the future of education is going to take form? Would online learning be the de facto factor, for example, the, the de facto mode of learning, for example? Mm -hmm. Or would yeah. it be the fact that you no, know, when things return back to normal, uh, every classes will just be back to the traditional face-to-face -face classroom led delivery style? Or, yeah. or or even blended learning, right? The best of both worlds, where you 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 blend both online as well as uh, the traditional face-to-face -face, yeah. uh, element into it. So 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 again, I I, I guess I guess. Uh, yeah, these are questions that I don't think we have an answer uh, suit, uh, which also spells exciting times ahead for you know, all education uh, institutions in that context, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I think there are questions that will they will constantly evolve and be re-asked and re-asked again, and and kind of that that transformation, and then it will just have to progress continually. Yeah. Um, so you know, some really fantastic insights um, there. Um, and you know, Market Tech Mondays is really about um, inspiring the the kind of next generation uh, of marketers, those that are already in the workplace and just starting out in their career, um, those that are that are just uh, looking to get in, perhaps. Like, if you could give them, you know, just a couple of pieces of advice, two pieces of advice. What would be those two pieces of advice for someone that's starting just at the right at the start of their career? Um, in marketing, looking to build their name, establish themselves. Well, I guess I guess I can only speak from my personal experience, uh, um, and and I probably would just focus on two areas. Uh, um, one would be you no know, marketing as a function, as a profession, and yeah. and a second one would uh, be the attitude. Right, as a as a depiction of who you are and 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 and, and how strong uh, you are going to be in that sense. Um, so I think first thing first, obviously, you know, marketing is forever changing. Um, uh, this is definitely partly due to technological advances. We are in on in the digital age where gone long gone were the days of you know who has the biggest print ad on newspaper right yeah. and and yeah. to now who is you know, going to rely on data to uh do more specific personalized native marketing that kind of you no know, jargons that we always face with day in day out yeah. i think i think i think um uh, with that obviously we also uh aware that the fact that you no know, there will be more and more platforms more tools more uh, solutions that will be made available for advertisers uh, and 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 trying to make that decision may be tough because uh, you may fall into that so-called trap of you no know, chasing your own tails in that context because you want to chase for the next big thing you know you want to jump onto the bandwagon of the next big thing and and, and stuff like that. But I suggest I think end of the day I think marketing is really 
about engaging your audience, your customers per se. Um, and, and whatever that we do, I think we have to place them at the heart of all things, right? Yeah. And and you no, know, just ask yourself, you no, know, uh, uh, what exactly do you think your you no know, audience want to see, or read, yeah. or hear, or feel, or even feel in that context? And 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 then from there on, how do you actually create a a, a, a journey and experience in that in that sense that you no, know, you you feel that your audience would then be able to be engaged and enjoy. I think it's that process that you need to take care of. And then uh, from there on, you no, know, look into obviously the different outlets of channels of how you're going to reach out to them and yeah. stuff like that. So 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 my, my take is that when it comes to marketing, you no, know, obviously number one is placing your customers first. Yeah. Uh, from there, you should be able to create contents that you know is that are meaningful and, and can resonate with them and they can be consumed by them, right? It's not interactive marketing in that context. And yeah. and following that, I think that is where you know your media selection will be you know very easy, more more straightforward in that context. Yeah. So so obviously, I think uh, again, you no, know, with with more tools and stuff like that, uh, data plays a very important role. Uh, so as marketer, we need to be data savvy as in, in that context. We need yeah. to be able to make sense of data, not just reading into the numbers, but you no know, yeah. making business out of it. I think that is also a, a critical skill set that uh, a yeah. marketer should possess, yeah. Uh, so on attitude, I think, I think end of the day, I don't think it's, uh, well, for me, certainly, uh, I can vouch for myself that, no, I wouldn't be able to maintain a positive mindset every day for the last 10 years of being a marketer, for example. It's just not possible in that context. Uh, yeah. But but I guess, I guess what I do think is possible is, you no know, already possess that right attitude uh, to, to, to allow you to approach your work the right way. Right, I think yeah. uh, uh, being a marketer is a journey. Right, uh, uh, you will want to experience your own ups and downs. Right, nobody mm -hmm. can. I think I think nobody can win all the time. Like I mentioned again, so yeah. when you fail, I think that is where you learn more things out of it. To be honest, so 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 that's my take. And I think continue to stay open to critics because they will never go away. Uh, open, be open to suggestions as well, and and continue to work hard and smart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, you know, and I think that's you know that's a great place uh, to to kind of leave us with that that piece of advice, really. So thank you so much uh, for spending the time to to speak with us today. Um, it's been super appreciated, and I'm sure that um, our viewers will will learn so much from hearing about your experiences and your journey. Um, I know I I certainly have. Um, so you know, there we have it. Um, this is uh, our Marketech Mondays uh, with uh, Jovan Lin uh, of PSB Academy. If you are a marketing leader uh, watching um, and you feel like you'd like to share your experiences, um, you know, please email us at mondays at marketech-apac.com. Um, my name is Paul Thompson. Thank you for watching. And until uh, the next insightful episode, take care.